In the first lockdown, which happened during summer, it was relatively easy to keep ourselves active. But now in lockdown two, we're entering winter and it's harder to motivate ourselves to exercise. Whilst it's always important to keep your immune system tip top to be able to fight infections, it's really never been more important than now in the pandemic. So in this video, I'm going to take you through some of the steps you can do in just 10 minutes to keep your immune system the best it can be. I'm Professor Janet Lord and I'm the Director of the Institute of Inflammation and Ageing at the University of Birmingham. And for 25 years, I've been researching what it takes to make your immune system healthy in old age. And in this video, I'm going to give you the results of that research and my top tips. So in this 10 minute routine, it's really important to warm up first. So we're just going to do some gentle exercise, literally walking on the spot. It's important to do a gentle warm up so that you get your muscles and your heart pumping nicely, your muscles moving so that when we go into the more vigorous exercises, you're not going to um, accidentally strain a muscle or any part of your body. The next thing we can do is to stretch our muscles a little bit more very gently. Do this at whatever pace you can. So find something to hold on to and gently raise your legs. Just five times is sufficient. This will ensure that you stretch your legs and again, when we come on to the more vigorous exercises, you're not going to pull a muscle. So now that you're nicely warmed up, how this exercise routine works is that we do some intense exercise so whichever routine we're doing, just do it as fast as you can to your own ability. That's the important thing. And each exercise you just do for 30 seconds. And then we have a 30 second nice cool down in between. Time the 30 seconds, however, works for you. You could do it on your phone. You could do it on your uh, kitchen oven timer. You could even do it on your microwave or a clock you have in your kitchen. Whatever works for you. So the next exercise is a simple chair rise. This is just getting out of the chair, up and then sitting down again, but doing it as many times as you can for 30 seconds. Let's go. And then a nice rest, just some gentle walking each time in between each exercise, just some gentle walking on the spot. In addition to doing aerobic exercises, it's important towards the end of your routine to do some exercises called resistance exercises, which will build your muscle strength. A good example are arm raises with a weight in each arm. Nice and sl slowly up, slowly down. Try to do five each side, 10 if you can manage it. Get creative, you don't need to buy weights. I just managed to get hold of these two pumpkins at this time of year. The last set of exercises involves the use of resistance bands. You can buy some online, but as with all of the exercise in this 10 minute video, you can do them with anything you've got around the house. So instead of commercial resistance bands, just find some old tights. All you have to do is stretch them as far as you can, bring them back in as far as you can. Bring them back in. Again, just do this for 30 seconds. And there's a version of this resistance exercise for your legs and thighs as well. Here it is. Simply tie your resistance bands or your tights around your knees and then try to pull the knees apart. Again, no need to buy a resistance band if you don't already have one. A pair of tights are just as good. We're often intimidated by exercise. Try to think of it as something that's simply helping your immune system to function as best as it can. And don't let it scare you. Just have a go, go at your own pace. A little is better than nothing. We know the worst thing you can do is sit around and do nothing all day. That really is bad for your immune system and will decondition that and your muscles at a very fast rate. This video is focused on the benefits of exercise for our immune system, but Move It or Lose It, I've got a whole series of these talks that you can go and listen to and learn more about the broader benefits of exercise for your health. So now you've finished your 10 minutes of exercise. The last little message 
regards vitamins. Many of you may not know which vitamins to take to help your immune system. And it turns out that this time of the year, probably one of the most important ones is vitamin D. This is made in the skin when it comes into contact with sunlight, but from October to March, we simply don't get enough sunlight to produce the vitamin D. So if I were to recommend one thing that you do, vitamin-wise, to keep your immune system healthy, is to take your vitamin D. When you've finished your exercise, you may be tempted to reward yourself with a high carbohydrate sugary snack. Please don't. These are pro-inflammatory. What I'd recommend you do instead is to take something that might benefit your health. Perhaps try some berries or a handful of nuts. If you are going to snack, keep it healthy. Fruit is always a good recommendation. Much of it is antioxidant, which will also help your immune system. As we get older, our immune system sadly doesn't function as well. It's not as good at fighting infections like pneumonia or viruses like the coronavirus. How exercise can help is that when muscle moves, it produces immune hormones called myokines, which actually help our immune system fun to function better. Of particular relevance to coronavirus, we know those patients that do very badly tend to have too much inflammation in response to the infection. An exercising muscle can help to dampen down that inflammation. So to sum up, in the 10 minutes it takes you to make a cup of tea or your morning bowl of porridge, you can do a simple set of exercises which help you to boost your immune system, fight coronavirus and require no special equipment. Go for it. And again, if you want to find out more and watch even more informative videos, go to Move It or Lose It online. I'm Professor Janet Lord, the Director of the Institute of Inflammation and Ageing at the University of Birmingham.